Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday, just after lunchtime here in Australia. Market sort of traveling sideways, up ever so slightly. Again, just sort of holding on to that two trillion dollar mark, which is nice. Can we hold it again? That really is the question. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the answer. I don't know. I am worried that we will go lower, but I also feel, you know, sem semi confident that maybe we're sort of at the bottom. But look. There's no guarantees in life. I can't tell you that we are. I can't tell you that we're about to moon because at the moment I just really am unsure. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm unsure and why I'm mostly just sort of, you know, I'm in a, the, my DCA, my sort of, you know, weekly fortnightly money after I rebalanced, it's sitting in cash really at the moment. I'm not doing too much. Again, I always sort of chip away at Bitcoin. So I'm buying a little bit of Bitcoin and a tiny bit of ETH. But outside of that, I'm not focusing on anything else other than just holding cash at the moment. And I'm going to show you why, but let's have a look at the charts. Uh, let's have a look at the market, sorry. And then when we get to the charts, I'll be able to explain why. All right. So Bitcoin dominance still, uh, you know, hovering around that kind of 39, 40% range. It's just under 39% now. Not a lot of volume. Volume is quite down at the moment. So that's interesting. Uh, Bitcoin price, 41,700 and Geek. <laughs> ETH gas prices uh, shot up a little bit there. So basically doubled. I think they were about $4 something just 24 hours ago. All right. So the last 24 hours, what's done well considering we're up half a percent, just over half a percent? There's going to be some movers. All right. So there we go. Chainlink's been making a bit of a move, which is nice. Luna making a bit of move, which is nice. Dash making a bit of a move. So look, there's some gains to be made there. Even Polygon, Matic, there we go, making a small move. I mean, that was up near $3. I think $2.80 something is where it got to. So it has lost a uh, substantial amount since then. Uh, but, you know, again, have we found the bottom? That really is the million dollar question. And again, as I said, I don't have the answers. Number one, as I say in every video, I'm never going to offer you financial advice, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. What you do with that information is completely on you. You know, you really need to make your own mind up. Don't ever follow anyone blindly and think that any one person knows exactly what's going on. They could be right for a little while. They could be right, right excuse me, for a long while. But eventually they're going to be wrong everyone gets wrong trades and things at some stage but what they do is they taste they make sure they have good risk management and if you don't understand what risk management is then this is a really dangerous place you need to have some risk management in place so just remember that look the easiest way to explain it is risk management is if you put all your money into matic is it like literally all your money like you don't have another cent left or is it just all the kind of spare money you have can you afford to live if you lose that money? If you can't, then you didn't have any risk management going whatsoever. You just chuck some money at something and look, if it plays out well, congratulations, you know, maybe you turn into, you know, I don't know about a millionaire, depending on sort of where you're from, but maybe it really changes your life and that'd be great. But if it didn't and it went the other way and then, you know, possibly ruined your life, then that was really, really bad. Again, that's there's no risk management there. So you need to understand what that is before you start to you know get into investing, and particularly if you're investing large sums of money. And large to one person might be twenty dollars if you're in some, you know, uh, I don't like the name, but you know, third world country where they just don't have a lot of money. Uh, and then, you know, large to somebody else, maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. But in the end it's all still the same sort of percentage wise. If you can't afford to lose it, then you shouldn't be investing that much. You're probably not taking risk management seriously or just don't understand what it is. And that is a real trap, ladies and gentlemen. Before you get involved in any kind of investing, make sure you understand what risk management is. Understand what you are putting at risk. And if it doesn't work out, will you be okay? Are you still gonna have money to be able to you know, feed yourself, feed your family? Have you got a job to you know, fall back on and things like that? If the answer is no, you shouldn't be investing. Now, again, that's not financial. Well, yeah, it's not financial advice because I can't offer you any, but that's as close to financial advice as you're going to get from me. Don't invest. Don't overcommit what you can't afford to lose. You know, you need to, yeah, 
do do some research before you do something like that. Again, if you ever do something like that, I'm I'm, I'm hoping that it works out for you and that everything goes well because then that would be the one occasion where, you know, maybe it might have been the smart idea, but that's more blind luck than really any intelligence behind that. And I'm not saying anything about Matic. I'm super bullish on Matic. I like Matic and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I will be putting more money into Matic, but... I haven't put all my money into Matic. And what money I have got in Matic, if I lost it, would it hurt? Yep, it had hurt a lot because it's done so well. For it suddenly to turn around and go to zero, that would really hurt. But it wouldn't crush me. I'd be able to survive. I'd still be able to eat. I'd still be able to, you know, I've got a job and all the rest of it. So they're things that I really want you to think about before you come in investing in anything, let alone cryptocurrencies, which are super volatile. And unfortunately, a number of these coins that are here now in four or five years time may be completely gone that is how it's been the last at least the last cycle again you go back and look at the top 10 of 2017 and then look at the top 10 now uh, it is significantly different not completely different there's some you know names still there that you've seen before but yeah it's not the same whatsoever all right so we see the gains and that's very nice and that's from just a half a percent move up what about losses though all right, Harmony's down, Jewel, DeFi Kingdom's down, Adam Yearn Finance near, Aave again coming down. Like I said, if it gets down to around that kind of $180, $170 mark, I will definitely be looking at it, but I won't be throwing the kitchen sink at it because if we make it down to there, then things have obviously got a little bit scary and I'd be starting to consider how much lower could we go, but I absolutely will be putting some money into Aave at sort of that kind of price. All right, so again... Losses, uh, gains, nothing's really happening at the moment. We're again traveling sideways. Now we're going to go onto the charts and I'm going to show you why I'm kind of sitting at the moment and just waiting to see what happens before I make any real kind of moves. So Bitcoin, all right, we got down into this zone like I thought we would. But now have a look at these candles. They're just indecision candles. It is a market that still doesn't know what it wants to do. Now, this is still very early for this day. And again, we're on a weekend, so we're waiting to see what might happen Monday. But indecision candles are not a sign of bullishness. Now, these could turn bullish. In five minutes' time, all of a sudden, boom, we get a big green candle because there's low volume and things like that. Could happen. But again, look at this falling wedge. Now, eventually, these generally turn bullish. But we might have to come way down to here, ladies and gentlemen, before that happens. Or it might happen just around about here. I don't know. But at the moment, the trend is your friend. And the trend says, we're going down. We had a fake out. We had another kind of fake out and a bit of a retest. But then we fall right down to the bottom of it. So that is why I'm not doing anything when it really comes to investing at the moment. Again, I'm always buying a little bit of Bitcoin that doesn't really stop, except for when it's at like all-time highs and I really pull back how much I'm putting into Bitcoin. But let's just say basically I'm always buying Bitcoin, but it will vary about how much I'm putting into it depending on where it is. I like to put more into it when it's at a discount, but not when the market is uncertain and maybe we're in an obvious bear market or an obvious bearish trend. And this is a bearish trend at the least at the moment. So I'm not going too crazy. And again, I'm really waiting to see, are we going to come down and kind of test this $37,000 level? Based on these candles, I definitely am concerned. But, you know, there is some confluence here. Look, we've been here. It was resistance there, kind of resistance support, support and resistance, resistance, a bit of support and resistance there. So there's confluence there. But I just get the feeling like we get a bit more confluence through here which makes me think we're probably going to come down to around about here but again never financial advice and i could be completely wrong the market will make its mind up uh, you know bitcoin's going to do what bitcoin's going to do all right so we know what my thoughts are on bitcoin i go over it every day because like it or not bitcoin still leads the market you know, in my opinion anyway and as i said bitcoin is then governed by other industries out there as well other markets if the s&p 500 is not doing well bitcoin's not doing well it may do all right for a couple of days it might have them push out a week longer but generally it follows very fast because people if the s&p 500 is not doing well they start to sell off risky assets first bitcoins can still 
is still considered risky. Will that change in the future? Yeah, could do. But most markets are still correlated, and particularly the S&P 500. If that is not doing well, you're going to be hard up to find other markets that are doing well. Again, you can have outliers, and those outliers can last for a little while, but generally, eventually, everything will catch up. And we know where the S&P 500 is at the moment. It's still going down. We're not going to worry about looking at those charts today. Uh, I'll follow up on that in the next couple of days. But if it's not doing well and the Dow Jones is not doing well, then it's hard for things like Bitcoin to do well. Bitcoin does well in you know markets that are going up all over the place. If all markets are going down, unfortunately, it corrects even harder. That is something to remember. All right, so... Again, people are like, oh, you know, if Bitcoin's not doing well, then what about altcoins? You know, could you go searching for altcoins? There's altcoins that are doing well, but they they do well for short periods of time and then they end up going down. So I'm going to show you some charts. Now, again, there's always exceptions to the rule, like we saw. There's some coins that are doing well right now, but it's will that last? I don't think it will last if Bitcoin continues to go down. Unless, you know, we're truly in a bear market and then, you know, Chainlink's probably going to continue to go up because it's got real world use all the time and maybe that will be the safe haven and the safe bet. That's what it was last bear market, but it didn't do so well in this bull market. It's not that it didn't do well at all, but it just didn't do as well as what people thought. And so maybe that is the bear market proof sort of play. We'll have to wait and see. But let's go and have a look at some of the coins I really like and that I'm really bullish on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to say this again. None of this is financial advice. And just because I'm bullish on these projects and like them doesn't mean that they're going to do well. It's just what I like. It is an opinion only. So I've varied over a few different kind of spaces. A couple of, well, one layer one, a layer two, a sort of gaming sort of play, and then a DeFi play. All right, so Secret Network is my layer one that I'm super bullish on. I think there's massive upside to this, but there's also regulatory uh, sort of worries and things. Uh, it is a privacy-based chain, but it's not the kind of privacy-based chain where it means no one can track it and things like that. That's not how it works, and I'm not here to do a review of it. You can go and have a look at that sort of stuff yourself, but it's privacy by default. But there's settings that you can do so if the government needs to be able to see what you're doing, then you can give them access. And it's not to your wallet that they can control your wallet, just that they can see what's going on. So that's sort of one of the things I really like about it. And so it is one of my bigger plays. And on the dollar, it looks like it's doing all right. As you can see, since the crash of everything back in March 2020, it's generally been on this uptrend, like most things have. But look, it goes up, it goes down, it's all over the place. So at the moment, have a look where it is. It looks like based on this trend, and this trend can change, particularly if we go into a bear market and all of a sudden this is not valid, but it looks like it's undervalued at the moment. Now again, when you do these lines, you know you can move these lines a little bit. So some people will say, oh no, we need to move it down to here and maybe that's a better indication. It's just thereabouts, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tool, it's a guide, it's not an exact science. So again, for me, I was like, no, nah, I feel like we're getting most of the touches sort of roughly through here and we can see it bounce off there a few times and things like that and there was a bounce there. So thereabouts. But again, look, if it makes you feel better, let's do it around about sort of here or let's go around about here, wherever. Either way, it's either quite undervalued uh, just undervalued or maybe you know we put it here and it's at fair value either way to me dollar wise this doesn't look too bad I kind of like the price where it is at the moment but I'm not going to base my buys simply on the dollar value I've spoken about this before and here's why I am not really chasing any altcoins at the moment now only time will tell if this turns out to be a good theory or a bad theory but remembering, I've already got my bags packed in this and I've already taken some profits out. So I'm up on this, but I've got a good size bag left. And if it gets down to prices that I like based on other things that are happening in you know markets all over the place, I might buy some more. But at the moment, I'm not. Even though according to this dollar value, it could be quite undervalued. But if we're going into a bear market, which is always possible, no one knows when we're in one until generally it's too late. And then you, you know, if you haven't taken profits, you're burnt. But look, it might have to come all the way back down to here, like 80-something cents. That is a definite possibility. 
All right, so the dollar value though, it looks all right at the moment. It looks like it's undervalued or fair value again, depending where you want to put this line, thereabouts. All right, what about against Ethereum? Here's where I start to get a little bit worried about these altcoins. And not that they can't go up a whole lot higher, just that I may be better simply sitting on the cash at the moment until the market decides where it's going. Could I be missing out on a great opportunity? Yep, but I might be saving myself from a really uh, bad uh, sort of outcome as well. So look where it is. It is up super high against Ethereum. Not the highest it's ever been, but it's up super high. So that makes me think that the safer plays, i.e. Ethereum and Bitcoin, would be the better play at the moment. But that is based on if the market continues to go up. Because if the market goes down, then really cash is going to be the better option, at least in the short term. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where it's going. The dollar value looks all right. Ethereum value doesn't look so good. It looks like it's really overpriced against Ethereum. I would rather be buying it somewhere down around about here. Now, what can happen is the dollar value still may be a really good buy at the moment. And maybe, and this is what I'm thinking is more likely to happen, but again, no guarantees, is Bitcoin and Ethereum get on a run. And so the dollar value of this still holds. It's at $6 or something, isn't it? What is it? Uh, $5.90. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, bang, they take off. So the dollar value holds, but then this just really dips down against Ethereum and Bitcoin and things like that. So this is where I'd want to start looking at it, even preferably buy it down here, but there's no guarantees it gets to here. But if that's the case, that it holds its dollar value, but just you know drops down significantly against Ethereum, and then the same Bitcoin, because here's the Bitcoin chart, similar sort of thing, not at the highest, but it's up quite high. But that means you would have been better having your money in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now there is the flip side. What happens if we just suddenly go into a mad altcoin season? And then this just shoots up against Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, then it was a really good time to buy. I don't know where it's going, but I know that I want to be buying altcoins when they're down here against Bitcoin and Ethereum, not when they're up setting near new all-time highs. I mean, this is nearly uh, near one of its old all-time highs. And it's only really got another kind of two other than this first one here, but it's only kind of got another two peaks to go higher. And again, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it could go to the moon. I got my bags packed. If I don't buy any more, then so be it. But it's just a bit risky at the moment to be putting money into altcoins. Again, into anything, in my opinion, never financial advice when the market is so shaky. Now, again, as I said yesterday, there's a lot of fear and all this kind of stuff going on. That can quite often be a sign of a good time to buy because everyone's really scared out of the markets and unsure. But sometimes it's an indication of things that are about to get worse. And I don't know where we are at the moment. So my bags are packed with crypto. I've now got a good cash position on the side. And I'm just going to kind of let things ride and wait and see what happens. All right, so that's secret network. So again, looks great on the dollar could be really undervalued, but it doesn't look so good against Ethereum and Bitcoin. Hence why I'm not buying it. And it's not that I don't like the project. I love the project. It's one of the projects I am most bullish on, but I'm trying to make smart decisions, not just emotionally based decisions. Oh, I love secret networks. So I'll buy it at any price. No, I want to buy it at good prices, discounts. All right, let's go to Matic. So again, that was my layer one kind of pick. Now look, again, I'm in Solana and I'm in uh, Ethereum. So it's not, yeah, it's the one that I'm most bullish on that could do the best, i.e. gains wise. I'm st I still think it's a great project, don't get me wrong, but it's just because it's lower down the cap. I think it's in outside the top 100 secret at the moment. So it really is kind of one of those uh, mid caps and it has, when it's performed well, it has performed really well. And that's what I like about it. And the team and everything that they're about as well. All right, Matic, layer two. So again, have a look at this dollar, mass accumulation. This is what it looks like, big accumulation. And again, we've seen this before. So back here, look at this. Big accumulation all the way along here. And then boom, it just shot to the top. So could that be what we're seeing right now? Absolutely it could be. Or... Things could get really bad, and maybe Matic should have come all the way down here to four cents. Oh, four cents, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, 41 cents. Or it might have to come way down here to three cents. 
Who knows? I don't know where the market's going at the moment. Hence why I'm not chasing anything. I've got a great bag of um, Matic. And I've sold a good amount of Matic and made... Pl- I won't, you know, not life-changing money, unfortunately, but I made plenty of money from the bag of Matic that I sold. So I can just let Matic ride now. And again, if the market sort of changes uh, and we get down to, you know, again, I tell you right now, if Matic somehow gets down to 40 cents, I'm buying some Matic. But I'm not going crazy. I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at it, as I say. I'll just buy some. And then I'll be looking for, all right, what happens if it gets down to 12 cents? Well, I'm going to buy some more. And what happens on the sum, how crazy chance it gets down to 3 cents? Then I'll be buying more. But again, I'm waiting for a market to make a decision on where it's going because I don't control the market. I play a part in what the market does, but a very small part. So, Matic on the dollar looks good though. It looks like mass accumulation, and it could be. How's it look against Ethereum? It's near all time highs. So, it's really, really high against Ethereum. That's concerning. That's why I don't want to buy it. It's not that this can't go way higher and set in a new all-time high, but it's just really overpriced against Ethereum, which means if Ethereum and Bitcoin as well start to dump, Matic, it'll get brutalized like all altcoins will. You know, if Bitcoin goes up by 200%, other altcoins can go up by 500, 1,000 plus percent. But if Bitcoin goes down by 50%, altcoins will go down by 70 80 90 something percent that's what worries me i mean look we've already seen it uh it went from what was that and this is against ethereum so 79,966 gui down to 33,446 gui that's a 50% retracement there against ethereum all right what about bitcoin same thing again with Bitcoin. It's at a near all-time high against Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin and you know Ethereum shit the bed, as they say, these are just going to get so brutalized. Like you know your two dollars ninety something or whatever it is, two dollar Matic. What is it at the moment? Sorry, where's Matic? What's that? At? Two dollars and one cents again could really come down to something sort of down around about here very very quickly. All right, so we know where Matic is not looking great against Bitcoin or Ethereum, but looks okay on the dollar. Engine, my sort of gaming play, NFT play. Here it is is how it performs against the dollar. We get these side wave movements and then it jumps up. Then we get these side wave movements and then it jumps up. And then we get these side wave movements. But remember, this chart only starts, what is that, in 2019. So it doesn't really include the bear market, although it includes some of a little bearish trend that we saw. So on the dollar, looking like it's around about just under fair value. And again, you can move this uh, this line around a little bit. How's it looking against Ethereum? The same as a lot of the other ones. Fairly high against Ethereum. Not the highest it's ever been, but high. All right, so it doesn't really look like it's a good buy at the moment based on how high it is against Ethereum. What about Bitcoin? Really high against Bitcoin at near all-time highs. There's only a couple of sort of wicks and things that really go higher. So Engine, and I love Engine, and I absolutely will continue to buy more Engine. It's just I, I won't be doing it at the moment because it's too high against Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Ethereum will lead the way and I need them to make decisions before I go chasing altcoins. And again, it's not that I don't love these projects that I'm showing you. Ladies and gentlemen, I love them. I absolutely will be buying more of them, but not when they're at prices like this. Not when the market is so, uh, you know, undetermined in which way it goes. Again, and I'm not talking about the dollar value. The dollar value, a lot of these looks like it's just sort of mass accumulation. But a lot of those charts that we're looking at, they aren't showing you what a bear bear market looks like because they weren't out in the last bear market. They came out a little bit sort of after. All right, Luna, another one I look, uh, I really like. Look how it's done uh, you know, <laughs> on the dollar. I mean, it's just, it's like a rocket. It you know, had its launch and then it died off like a lot of coins do and then it just really starts to make a move. 
excuse me, one big pump, and then we had that retracement. So again, we went from $22 to $4. Oh, I can't even work out what kind of retracement is that. Oof, that is brutal. 82% retracement, ladies and gentlemen. And that's not even in a bear market. That is just par for the course. And that is why I'm not chasing altcoins at the moment. You just got to be very careful, particularly when Bitcoin and Ethereum are just shaky at the moment. And, and that's the facts because all markets are shaky at the moment. And again, that can change in the next five minutes. But until it does, I just don't want to make any moves. How's it doing against Ethereum? Well, I mean, have a look. It's literally near all time highs again against Ethereum. So that is worrying. I don't want to be buying coins when they're so high against Bitcoin and Ethereum because the chances are they're going to come back down rather than run higher. But that doesn't mean it's impossible for them to run higher. They could. I, you know, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's coming and what's happening. I can just take you know, some what I like to consider, again, somewhat educated guesses. What about Bitcoin? Same thing again, basically at all-time highs against Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I said this a little while ago and I'm going to say it again. If things start to heat up, I think Bitcoin and Ethereum run first. And that is going to drag these down. And this is when them being dragged down is good, is good though. If they go super down because Bitcoin and Ethereum are going up, then that's good. But if they go super down because Bitcoin and Ethereum are going down as well, that is really, really bad, ladies and gentlemen. That is when you're going to see this, you know, 70-something dollar Luna possibly end up back down here at around a 50-something cent Luna. And I'm not saying it will get to here. I don't know where the price is going to get. We'll have to wait and see. But that would be one hell of a retracement. And that's when things really hurt. That's why I'm not chasing altcoins at the moment. It's just not the right time. The market needs to make a decision on which way it's going. And it's all markets at the moment. Like I said, the only market that I can think of that's doing well right now is property. And that may be getting ready to have, you know, if interest rates go up and things like that, that's really going to put some pressure uh, on the housing market and things like that. So times are just, you know, if you're bullish enough to just, you know, go out and start buying up everything, then congratulations to you. And again, I'm hoping you're right. I really am. Because if you're right, then it's going to be good for me as well. But if you're wrong and you don't have any risk management and you've just gone all in and you're thinking, nah, this is it and it's going to the moon and I'm set and we are in a bear market and things continue to get worse over the next, you know, 10, 12 months, whatever it may be, and maybe we're in a recession and things get really bad for five to 10 years, you will absolutely get wrecked, ladies and gentlemen, if that's what happens. Again, have a look at that. Near all-time highs against Ethereum, near all-time highs against Bitcoin. And that is why I am not investing in altcoins at the moment. Like I said, if they get to a certain price, I might throw a few dollars at them because I just think, yeah, all right, you know, it's worth putting a, a very small sort of bet on, as you would say. And I don't like to consider myself a gambler or, or betting, but really that is what you're doing when you're investing. You, you're gambling that you believe this is going up as opposed to down. And, you know, or you, you're longing. And again, I don't do any leverage trading. You're longing because, again, you believe the price is going up or you're shorting because you believe it's going down. It's a, it's a gamble. It's a bet. <sighs> but the markets, they're just... In the altcoin space, they're too overheated at the moment. Again, I could be completely proven wrong and everything takes off tomorrow. And if that's the case, I'm more than happy for you to let me know how wrong I was because I don't mind letting you know that I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. But I just want to make sure that I have some good risk management in there. So if it all turns to poo, I'm not completely and utterly wrecked. And hence why I made sure I got a good position in cash. But if the markets take off, then sweet. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm set anyway. But if the markets absolutely crash and tank, then again, I'm still doing all right. All right, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know exactly where I am and why I'm not chasing the altcoins at the moment. And I'm not really buying too much of anything other than, like I said, I buy Bitcoin pretty much weekly, fortnightly. But I will change how much I'm putting into it based on where the market is. And at the moment... I'm really just sitting on more cash than I am buying in the market at the moment. Stay safe, be kind to one another, 
pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But if you are, congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.